We've been going through the Word of God this entire year, every book of the Bible. Now here we are in August, over halfway uh, of, the, of the year, and we've already gone way past halfway of the Bible. And for those of you who are new and your visitors, we thank you for being here. And what we've done is we've taken every message and they're online on our YouTube channel and also on our website. So every single Sunday, I cover a different book of the Bible. And so this week, we're talking about the book of Acts. And I want to encourage you to let others know about the other books that we're going to go through. There's a, there's a page that's being turned here uh, in, when going through the book of Acts. Is, it's also subtitled as the Ascended Savior, the Savior that ascends to be with us. And we're going to learn who he is. Um, we've learned in the Old Testament that man is frail and sins, and they find themselves unprotected. So God creates a plan of deliverance and redemption, and man accepts that redemptive plan, and they become righteous once again. We've learned it through coming out of the Garden of Eden. We've learned it through the Ark of the Covenant and with, uh, with uh, Moses. We've also learned it through Noah. We've learned it through the prophets, uh, after a while, God continued to build these plans through the children of God. He gave us the 12 different tribes, and, and man kept blowing it, and God kept creating new plans of deliverance. Until finally, it got to the point where the Lord said, all right, I'm not going to use my people anymore. I'm going to go to the world. And he began to raise up these wicked kings like Nebuchadnezzar and, 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 and Cyrus and, and others to be able to help create and build the temple of God. And still man kept blowing it. And so he said, I'm going to talk through all my prophets and I'm going to prophesy to them that's going to come a new deliverance and a new savior, a Messiah. And so man kept blowing it still. And every time man blowed it, blew it, God created a plan of salvation. Man accepted the plan of salvation and God redeemed them, and they became perfect again. Remember the Bible, and the Word of God is a three-part series. Man blows it, God creates a plan for forgiveness, and then man becomes redeemed or forgiven, and he's redeemed once again. And then man blows it again, and it's an ever-changing cycle. So now in the New Testament, which we started last week, with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the birth of Jesus Christ and our Savior, Jesus, God said, that's it. I'm not going to use my, this, my 12 tribes. I'm not going to use the prophets. It doesn't mean he did away with any of it. He says, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down myself, and I'm going to deliver them. And he gave us Jesus, who is also called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And now, to this day, all the way till the coming of Jesus Christ, we have this plan of salvation. That we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. He comes and he moves into the temple of our heart. And he comes with all of his strength. And now he no longer reigns from a, from a place so far away. He reigns and rules inside our hearts. And he prepares us that now the temple of God is with man, and that's what we're going to learn today. And it comes with a power of the Holy Spirit. Some people see the Holy Spirit as a mystical mist, uh, a, a character or an emotion, but the Holy Spirit is actually a person. Just like Jesus was the person of the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is the person of the power of God. The person of the Holy Spirit we're going to be introduced to today in the book of Acts. The book of Acts in Spanish is called Echos, which means the deeds that were done. The book of Acts is named Acts because it talks about the Acts of the Apostles. The Apostles were the disciples that became apostles after the ascension of Jesus Christ. And then they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit inside his life. In Acts chapter 7, verse 48, we begin with this scripture. It says, The Most High does not dwell in temples 
made with hands, but he dwells in temples that he provided. There was times past the Holy the, the God dwelt in the garden. Then God dwelt outside of the garden and dwelt in the chambers of the celestial. And then little by little, God found a place of his temple. And then from his temple, he would dwell and live in the Ark of the Covenant. And there was so much that was done well there. But now God is dwelling with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And that's where he says, we're the temple of God. He doesn't dwell in a building like this. A building like this is not the church, though we refer to it as the church. But the name that is on the building is your name as a congregation. You are the church of Jesus Christ. Point to that person next to you and tell them you are the church of Jesus Christ. Tell them you are the church. You're the church. We, the church, meet and gather in the building called Center Church. This is the building of God that houses his, his temple. We are his temple. This place is anointed because we are anointed. Some people will say, oh, there's a curse here. There's a curse there. Nope. There's a blessing here, and the blessing lives in this house. We worship in this house. We learn in this house, and it's blessed because the blessing is on us. Wherever I go, the blessings of God go with me. That's the way you need to see yourself. Wherever you go, the blessings of God go with you. I put a post this past week of a place my wife and I went to, a, a very, very healthy place in South Padre Island called, what was it, Bear Baker or something like that. They make a custom-made ice cream sandwiches. They are nowhere near healthy. They are nowhere near good for you. But man, they taste great. And they get you get to pick your own cookies out. I know you're going to get hungry in a second. You get to pick out your own ice cream. And they jam it together and they heat it up in this cookie that's this big. Oh my God, I want one of those right now in Jesus' name. Tony, help me. <laughs> we walk into the building and it's completely empty. We walk into the restaurant, completely empty. No, no, even the workers were like looking at each other, trying to figure out what to do. My wife and I walk inside there. We're looking at us. How's this work? We've never been here before. How's this work? Well, my wife ordered one and I ordered one. We didn't even share. We, I regretted that later. Uh, but... We went ahead and ordered it, and we got over to the cash register. And when I turned around, it was like buses of people had let out, and there were all these people inside the building placing orders, and the line went all the way outside the door, and there were all these people trying to get into this little tiny boutique of an ice cream shop. And I looked over to my wife, and I said, Look at that, honey. The blessings of God follow us everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. This is not something new. We learned this many years ago. Mom and as far back as 1989 in Topeka, Kansas, walked into a travel agency. That's how long ago it was. There was a travel agency. <laughs> they don't have those anymore. We went to a travel agency the last few minutes of the day when they were about to close the door, knowing that there wasn't anybody going to be there and they'll take care of us. And when we walked in there, there was nobody there. And then one right after another, people kept walking in. So finally, one of the agents said, we better lock the door. We're already closed. And they got all these people waiting for them to finish with us. Children of God, I want you to know the blessings of God reside in your life. And wherever the children of God go, blessings follow right behind you. The Bible says, these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. The blessings of God come on you because you are a child of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 says, Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of of the Holy Spirit. Come on, do this right here. Put your hand right here on you and say, I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God. You are not your own. You don't belong to you. 
You do not belong to God. If the Holy Spirit is inside you, you don't belong to God. For you were bought. You were bought at a price. The price was the price paid on Calvary's cross. Jesus died on the cross. And he bought you with his blood. The price of your soul was the life of God. The life of God became death, so that way you could be bought. You are valuable. You are expensive. The life that said, light be died for you. And you were bought by that price. He owns you. Everybody say, God owns me. It says, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You glorify God in your body, and you're to glorify God in your spirit, because it belongs to God, it does not belong to you. Let me tell you something. I tried owning myself, and all I did was I made a mess out of everything. I got into debt, I got sick, I lied about everything, I was a thief, I was a crook, I did drugs, I drank, I made a mess of everything. When I finally realized that he bought me, I decided to surrender and become a slave to God. And when I became a slave to God, he made sure that I had food. He made sure that I was healed. He made sure that I was prospered. He gave me cars. He gave me houses. He gave me a beautiful wife. He gave me wonderful children. He gave me great grandchildren. He gave me a congregation. He gave me friends. He gave me people that love me because I belong to him. I don't belong to me. It's not by my might, nor by my power, nor by my spirit, but by the spirit of God do I do everything. I don't own me. I don't belong to me. I don't belong to anybody else. I belong to God. God owns me. God can do whatever he wants to do with me. I am his. He is mine. His banner over me is love. I belong to God. I'm not here because I want to be here. You want to know where I want to be? I want to be in Puerto Rico. I want to be on a hammock between two palm trees looking at the water. My daddy put that vision inside me and I made it mine. And I've done it. I went to Hawaii and I slept on a hammock and I realized what life was like on a hammock. And I stayed there for eight hours straight. People would pass by. When's this guy getting off the hammock? I said, I am going to sleep here. I read a book here. Mama brought me food here, brought me drinks here. I didn't want to leave here. And I said, I want to live here. I could be here all the days of my life. That's where I want to be. But because I don't belong to me, I belong to God. If God wants me on a hammock, he'll figure out how to get me there. If he wants me in Hawaii, he'll figure out how to get me there. If he wants me in far Texas, he'll figure out how to get me here. He wants me in front of you because I belong to him and I don't belong to me. Hallelujah. He's got to get take care of my cars. He's got to take care of my houses. He's got to take care of my health. He's got to take care of me. Why? Because I am a slave to him. I was bought by a price. And I'm going to glorify him in my body and in my spirit. And if someone has a problem with all my stories, you better take it up with my master. You take it up with him. Don't complain to me. And don't complain to your friends. Don't complain to anybody else. Oh, he always talks about himself. Why? I'm a slave. I'm just telling you what God will do to a slave. He'll heal you, deliver you, prosper you. Make you go places you never thought you'd go. I'm a slave. Well, John the Baptist warned us about all this. John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, he says this, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. That's what John was. He was a baptizer. The word baptize means to submerge. It comes from the Greek word baptizo, baptizo, which means to submerge. So he said, I indeed baptize you onto water, onto I baptize you with water onto repentance. But, everybody say, but. He who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit 
and fire. I baptize you with water to forgiveness, but he's going to baptize you with the Spirit of God and with fire. The word baptize means submerge. I baptize you, I submerge you in water, but there's one mighty that's going to submerge you in the Holy Ghost. He's going to put you deep down into the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost is going to put you deep down into the fire of God. The fire of God scares the hell out of everybody. Literally, the fire of God is, is designed to burn hell out of you. The fire of God is designed to remove all impurities out of you. The fire of God is the fire of God that will remove alcohol, drug addiction, uh, homosexuality. It'll burn out all problems that you have, uh, addictions. It'll burn out lying, stealing, cheating. It'll burn it all out of you. You just got to let him because he's a gentleman. You got to resign yourself that you belong to him and not to yourself. You don't belong to you. You're owned by Jesus. He bought you. So he says right here, baptism means to be submerged and submerged in the Holy Spirit and fire. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, it says, Now if anyone builds on this foundation, who is Jesus? Jesus is the foundation. When you receive Jesus, you get baptized in water, onto repentance, a foundation is laid down. That's a foundation. His name is Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus is my foundation. The apostle tells us that we got to build our house on a solid rock. And the Bible says, Jesus tells us, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. If you are built on sand, the storm's going to come and blow the sand away. doesn't matter how good you build your house. If you build it on the beach, if you build it on the sand, it's going to wash away. But he wants you to build it on him, who's the solid ground. He wants you to dig your roots down deep into who Jesus is. He's your solid foundation. But if you build on this foundation, gold, silver, and precious stones, we're talking about precious minerals. If you build on this foundation, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, patience, self-control. If you build on this foundation, the works of the ministry, feeding the poor, taking care of the widows. If you build on this foundation, good minerals, this foundation is good. But if you build on this foundation, it goes on and says wood, hay, straw, which is lying, stealing, cheating, drugs, addiction, sexual immorality. If you build on the foundation, all these impurities, watch what happens. Each one's work will become clear for the day. The word day means the daylight. The day, we are sons of the day, not sons of the night. The day's going to declare it. Why? Because it will be revealed by what? By what? It will be revealed by fire. Well, what fire is that? Is God going to come down and get a big lighter and turn you on? Is God going to pour gasoline on you and try to ignite you by fire? No. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit, he's going to submerge you into the fire of God. That fire of God burns. But it burns impurity. you got to let the fire of God burn through you. When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, he begins to remove all these things off of you. All those problems that you have, he'll remove them right off of you. You won't even have to worry about all those challenges that you have. you got to have the Holy Ghost in you. When you have the Holy Ghost in you, He never leaves you the same. Don't expect to get the Holy Ghost and go back to normal. There'll be nothing normal about you. People are going to look at you, they're going to say, He's weird. There's something wrong with this person. He thinks different, talks different, acts different. He's not the person that He used to be. There was a man by the name of Dr. Quintanilla. Bro, you remember Dr. Quintanilla. This doctor was a doctor. He was an herbalist. He used to teach curandismo at Pan American University. Many of y'all don't know that Pan American University used to teach curanderas. He used to teach people how to be curanderas. For those of you who are watching from somewhere in California or Wyoming, curanderas are witch doctors. And entering into witchcraft, they try to use the name of Christianity. And this guy would provide to all the different curanderas all over the valley. When he came to the church one day, he heard that my father was having a long uh, revival on healing. It was a 21-day healing revival. And he decided, somebody's moving into my territory 
And he says, I'm going into that church. Who's this curandera who's going to try to move into my territory? When he came in dressed all black with a black hat and black boots, black belt, black pants, black shirt, everything black. And he came right in. When he came in, everybody freaked out because everybody knew who he was. He used to be on the newspaper all the time. He was a bad guy. A witch doctor. He came in, and when he came in, he had an altar call, and he came walking up to my dad, and he started seeing all these miracles and signs and wonders that were taking place. And he says, how are you doing all this? I need to learn this. He said, because we have to use, you know, chicken foot and eggs to be able to do this, and you just do it by laying hands on them. How do you do that? And my father began to minister to him, and the man ended up accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. And then he put all this down, and one day he calls the church, and I'm in the office, and he says, Hey, Pastor Clark, got to ask you. He says, Well, I just read in this Bible that I should be baptized in water and the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? And so I told him what it was, and I said, We have water baptism once a week or once a month. Come on in and at such and such time of the month, and we'll water baptize. He says, Do I have to wait till then? I said, Well, no. If you want to get baptized this weekend, I'll fill the bathtub, the, the, the baptistry up right away. And I'll baptize you this weekend. He goes, do I have to wait that long? And I said, well, no. Do you want, do you have a pool? Well, I baptize you in a pool. And he goes, no, I don't have a pool. He goes, but I got a bathtub. I said, well, you fill that bathtub up. Make sure you got a pot of coffee ready. I'm on my way. And I got in my car and I drove all the way to his house in Harlingen. And when I got there, he and his wife were in their swimming suits in the middle of the day. And I went into the bathroom with both of them. And one at a time, I baptized them in the water in the name of Jesus. When they came out of that bathtub, they began to pray in the Holy Ghost. They began to pray with other tongues. I said, this is incredible. This is the first time I ever baptized anybody in the bathtub and came out praying in the Holy Ghost. And they were completely changed. Several months later, I get a phone call from him. He said, hey, pastor, I need your help. I said, what's going on? He said, my daughter's got a problem. I said, what kind of problems your daughter got? He says, well, you got to come over here and talk to her. I don't know what's going on either, but can you explain to her what's going on? I said, okay, I'm on my way. I get over there. And when I get there, they're sitting down. And he, Quintanilla and his wife, all loving and everything, sitting there hand in hand, big old smile, beautiful. And I look at the daughter. The daughter's, daughter's mad at me. She said, I don't know what you did to my dad and my parents. I said, what do you mean? Well, you did something to them. Look at them. And when I look at them, they're like this. I said, what? What are you talking about? So look at them. My dad is a hard man. He's a mean man. But look at this guy. He's all happy, laughing all the time, talking good. There's something wrong with him. And I said, well, is this a bad thing? He said, I don't know what it is, but it's not my dad. So I told her what happened. She says, well, I don't know about this. And I said, well, what do you want me to do? You want me to put that bad spirit back inside him? She goes, I don't know. And I said, well, I think you did get saved. She goes, well, don't do that to me, she said. And she wouldn't accept it. She, would, she completely denied it. But this man to this day, if he's still alive in Jesus' name, if he's still alive, it's a baptized by the power of the Holy Spirit, completely changed his life. God, he completely got rid of all the, the, the herbs, got rid of all the supply. He said, I can't do this anymore because I'm not my own anymore. I belong to God. I don't belong to me anymore. And God began to prosper him in businesses and other areas. That's what the Holy Ghost will do for you. That's what the book of Acts is about. It's echos. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Watch what happened. Jesus makes this statement in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus tells him, he says, but you shall receive power. Everybody say power. The word power in the Greek is dunamis, which means chain reacting power. He says, you shall receive chain reacting power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, all the way to the ends of the earth. Here's what happened in the book of Acts. God said, I am with you by Jesus, and your sins are forgiven, but now I'm going to put my power inside you by the Holy Ghost, and your life will never be yours. Your life is mine, and I want you to be a witness to me everywhere that you go. You will not walk by your power. You will not walk by your sight. You will walk by my spirit, saith the Lord. You won't have to worry about sin. Sin has to start worrying about you. You hear what I said? You don't have to worry about sin. Sin has to worry about you. 
People all around you will start changing. You'll start talking different. You'll start acting different. And people all around you will start wondering, what just happened to you? Man, you're talking totally different. You're, you're speaking a language I've never heard of before. You're doing things and you're saying things. There was a guy by the name of Ropel. Ropel was a bad guy. His, every weekend, he would go to, to, uh, uh, to, to Cantinas just to pick a fight because he enjoyed fighting. He'd go get a couple of brews, he'd put them down, and he'd find the biggest guy that he could find, and he'd begin to lay them out, just punch them all out. Ropo was 60-something years old when we met him. His hair was all the way down to his belt, had it all braided up over here. He had a beard that came down just as far as his belt, too. He had these sunglasses on all the time, tattoos everywhere. He looked like he just got off a of Harley Davidson. He comes walking into the church one day. And he takes the seat right there, right about where you are, Vince. And we're preaching the gospel, and we're preaching hard. I'm looking at this guy, man. This guy looks like a bad guy. He's going to take me down. But what's he doing here? He needs a life change. And we finish ministering, and my wife begins to move in the gifts of the Spirit and starts laying hands on the sick. And Ropu came up. And when Ropu came up, man, my wife went to go lay hands on him. She didn't even get close to him. Ropu ends up falling back about six, seven rows back. And I'm not exaggerating. I mean, literally, just started falling backwards. Took out six, seven rows in the front of the church all the way, all the way to the back and fell out. The next day, we were having this revival. This was during the revival time. The next day, he came and he said, hey, sir, I need to, I need to ask you something. I said, what's that? He says, your, your wife is strong. I said, okay, well, I knew that. I mean, this woman is strong. And so I said, oh, well, I know she's strong. He says, no, you don't understand. And that's when he confessed to me. He says, I, was a, I go to bars and I pick fights all the time. My wife said she wants to leave me because I won't quit fighting, kept getting arrested. Party's not over till the handcuffs are on. That's a real party, <laughs> worldly party. Party's not over till the handcuffs are on. And he says, and I came over here because I need to change a life. And I heard, you're going to help me with my change of life. You know who Jesus was or nothing. And he says, and your wife punched me in the stomach. I said, what? She punched me in the stomach. And every weekend I'd go to fight and I'd take on the biggest guys and I'd lay them all out. But your little wife over there punched me in the stomach and knocked me back. I couldn't believe it. I got up off the floor and I said, what in the world? And so I said, honey, come on over here. This man over here is telling me that you punched him in the stomach. She goes, I didn't even touch her. I didn't even touch him. I went to go pray for him. The power of God hit, her and hit him and knocked him through seven rows. The Holy Spirit knows how to get through to you. And whatever your crutch is, the Holy Ghost will use it to turn you around and to change you. This man stood up and... When, he, when she got close to him, he just started crying. When you look at him, his beard was completely wet, and he asked the Lord to come inside his life. And he ended up asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit till the day he died. That man was born again, saved, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And everybody started saying, what happened to this man? His wife, by that weekend, was so excited about how he was a totally different person. She decided to wake up early in the morning and make biscuits and gravy for the entire church. Oh, I appreciated that because, you know, pastor works for what? I work for food. And so he, 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 she came with biscuits and gravy and brought me a plate. So I don't know what you did to my husband, but thank you. And they came to church every single day thereafter. That's what. That's right. She came and fed us. And then she asked the Lord to come into her life at the end of the service. That's what the Holy Ghost will do. The Holy Ghost will do things like that wants to change you. It's dunamis power. Purpose of the Holy Ghost is for you to be a witness to him. To all over the world. How are we going to get 10,000 people in this place? By the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to move by the power of the Holy Ghost. You have to have the Holy Ghost inside you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 4. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it fell upon the house where they were sitting, then they all appeared unto them, divided tongues as of fire. As of what? As of what? The fire of the Holy Ghost came down and sat on every one of them. And then sat on all of them. And they were all filled with what? And they began to speak with other tongues as the what? 
Spirit gave them utterance. When you're a slave, you don't talk on your own initiative. You talk on the power of the Holy Ghost. My friends, every time you've heard me preach here, every word that I've ever said, everything that I've said that pierced your heart, every word that I said that connected with you, it wasn't coming from Clark Ortiz. Even right now, it's coming from the Holy Ghost. It's not me. I died back in 1985. This is nothing but the Holy Ghost. This is the Spirit of God. It's not me. It's not me. You don't want to know who I was. This is the Holy Ghost. I don't belong to me. I belong to God. He's owned me for 40 years. He's owned me. If you don't like the things that I say, take it up with him, not me. Take it up with my master, not me. I died a long time ago. I'm alive right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2, verse 6 says, And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. Watch this. Because everyone heard. Who's everyone? Everyone. Everybody in the city. Everybody. There was a census going on, and they all came into the city. And when they heard, when the Russian mighty wind came, they all heard it. When they began to pray in the Holy Ghost, they all heard it. Everybody heard it. When the Holy Ghost comes on your life, everybody will know something happened. Everybody will know. In verse 16, but this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. The Holy Spirit operates in the supernatural, in the inner man. He wants to change your flesh, and he wants to change your spirit. He wants to change the outer man. He wants to change the inner man. He wants to change everything about you. In Acts chapter 28, we find the Apostle Paul, the very last chapter of the book of Acts. The Apostle Paul wrecks on a boat. He makes his way swimming to the shore. The natives of the shore, they see him, and they thought most certainly this guy was judged by God. And they were thinking of Job when he was, uh, when he was thrown out of the water and swallowed by a whale, swallowed by a big fish, and then was spit up. They probably thought he was spit up. He was judged by God. They said, look at him. This guy's going to die. He's judged by God. And when they saw him, he gets up, and they realize, oh, my gosh, who is he? And so they went ahead and they accepted him in and they decided to make a fire. And oh, uh, the apostle starts picking up some sticks. And when he picked up sticks, he put it down there and they lit the fire. When he picked up the sticks, the snake, the snake comes out of there and bites him on the hand. And when they bit him on the hand, they said, there's the judgment of God on him. He's going to die of this serpent. But instead, when that snake bit his hand, the Bible says, watch this. He says, and it happened. It happened that after... Publius laid, oh, let me back up here, verse uh, 28, verse 5. But he shook off the creature into the fire, and he suffered no harm. That snake took lodge on his hand, and he just went like that and shook it right off. And then they were watching to see what would happen to him, and nothing happened to him. And they said, oh, my gosh, he must be a god. That's what they were saying. See, it was the power of the Holy Spirit that was working, and they didn't even know that that's what they were seeing. They see him, he's saved by a shipwreck, he's saved by a, by a snake being bit, and they saw all this stuff, and then watch what happens in Acts chapter 28, verse 8 and 9, and it happened that the father of Publius lay sick in the fever, in the distenny, distenny. So Paul went to him and prayed and laid hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed. When you have the Holy Ghost on you, it doesn't change one person. It doesn't change two people. It changes everybody around you. Everyone around you will be completely transformed and changed. They'll heal everybody. I don't know how many times I've seen people go and receive healing by a man or a woman laying hands on them. We sent a couple to, to uh, Valley Baptist Hospital one time in charge of hospital visitations to pray for the sick. And then they came back after several months to a year. They came back. They said, Pastor, the hospital just kicked us out. So what do you mean you got kicked out? He said, well, we've been praying for the hospital, for the heart floor, the whole heart floor. 
And so we went over there to go pray for them. You know, they put scriptures in pillowcases and they would put pillowcases on the head of the patients, the heart patients. They would lay hands on them and all that. And he says, well, we went over there with our pillowcases one time and there was nobody sick. So we went to the second floor where there were cancer patients and we started praying for the cancer patients. And so when we got there today, we went over there and they said, hey, we, you can't be here. So what do you mean? We got a permit and everything we could be here. He said, no, you keep praying for the people. There is no patient on the heart center and there are no patients in the cancer center. You're bad for business. You got to get out of this hospital. And they threw them out of the hospital. They threw them out of the hospital because they, all these people, two floors, they were going to go floor to floor and everybody, can you imagine a whole hospital shutting down because there's no more patients? That could have happened. Well, we said, let's pray. And we went to the Holy Ghost and and the Spirit of God said, pray for a new person. And my wife and I were getting our house remodeled one time. And we decided to stay in a hotel during the weeks that it was going to take. And my son, my little son, would go out and meet everybody. He said, Daddy, you got to meet this couple over by the breakfast. And we went over to the breakfast place. And there's this husband and wife. And I said, how do you do? And they said, we're doing good. And I said, I'm, my name's Pastor Clark Ortiz. And I always say that because I want them to know I'm a preacher of the gospel. So I said, I'm Pastor Clark. Oh, you're a pastor? He said, yeah. Well, what are you? He said, well, I'm a chaplain. I said, yeah, you're a chaplain. What, what are you doing here? He says, well, I just took the position as being a chaplain over the uh, Harlingen Valley Baptist Medical Association. I'm the chaplain of the hospital, and I start tomorrow. And I said, oh, I need to sit down and talk to you. And I sat down and talked to him. He was spirit-filled, and he just took that position on. I told him what happened, and he said, Pastor, when I get all settled in in there, I want you to come in there, and I'm going to relicense everybody in your church that wants to do it. And he ended up giving us all licenses to go back into the hospital. That's what the Holy Ghost will do. That man, God blessed that man all the way to one day I turn on the TV set. He traveled around. He ended up going back into the military. And he became a chaplain for Washington, D.C. during President George Bush's tenure up there in Washington, D.C. The man today is retired from the military. God will do things like that for you under the power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, the Holy Spirit wants to come in your life. That's what the whole book of Acts is. And every book we talk about from this moment forward are words and messages that are preached by the power of the Holy Ghost. Totally different now. The Word of God is totally different from this moment forward. You're going to hear some things that are going to be unbelievable. You're going to hear about people that tried to die and commit suicide and they couldn't. You're going to hear of people that died and gave up their life for the cause of the Lord and they did die, but they gave them up for God. And you're going to find out about a man that found himself on an island and God opened up heaven and showed him the last days. You're going to learn about that all the rest of this year. I don't want you to miss a single Sunday because right now we're talking about the God of heaven with man, with you, and with me. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Stand to your feet if you will. Let's go to God right now. I don't know where you are in your walk with Christ. But I want to ask you, if you want to ask Christ to come inside your life, and I'm going to say a special prayer for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then in September 22nd through the 28th, I'm going to be teaching eight days about the divine. I don't want you to miss out. I'm going to get you prepared for that. Amen? Lift your hands to heaven right now. And I want you to repeat this prayer together with me and the whole church. Lord Jesus, forgive me of your sin, my sins. Wash them all away. Come live inside me. Make me a new person. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit, I accept you right now as the power of God inside my life. Fill me up to overflowing. Give me all your gifts. Speak to me about what God is saying. I receive you, Holy Spirit, as the power of God in me. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, come on, give the Lord a loud praise. Amen. Wow, that was awesome. <laughs> you have a word for them? Amen. Hallelujah. So don't forget that the book of Acts, it's how important it is. It introduces the Holy Spirit in your life. And, and the Holy Spirit will enable you um, to just manifest in your life. So I don't know who needs to hear this, but you know, this, this week was an amazing week for me and I encountered something that was in the dark and it was brought to light to me and I had to face it. 
So I don't know if anybody has something in the dark, you know, and, and needs to face it. But I want to tell you that you're not facing it alone. You know, when I encountered that, I forgot everything that I knew. But it wasn't until I said the name of Jesus that it all came to light to me and my eyes opened up. And I want to tell you that the book of Acts is so important because in Acts chapter 1, 8, it tells you that you will receive the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be witness to any of those around you. And that's God. That's our job, you know, to manifest that in our lives so that we can share it. Remember, embrace. Embrace a transformation and empowered your life through the baptism of the Holy Spirit with an open heart. Open your heart and receive. Because you don't know when you're going to face what's in the dark. Okay? <laughs> you don't know. And I wasn't ready for that. But I'm so glad that I remembered the name of Jesus. Because that instantly, I had no fear for what was in front of me. And I led that person to Christ. Okay? <laughs> Amen. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this wonderful day. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for your love, your kindness, and your mercy, Lord. Lord, I pray for kindness and mercy in everyone's life. May your grace fall upon them. May his face shine upon your face, Lord. Bless them throughout the week. Silence the chaos out there so that they can hear you. Be with them. Bless them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you want to meet Pastor Clark, Pastor Lisa, they'll be out in the foyer.